So this video is basically about the 123 ADC on the other channel that's gone up today and basically it's inception. Most of this video is actually going to be edits from a uh, vlog post that was about a couple of weeks ago when I started messing around with this stuff and this was after another vlog post about kind of getting into these kind of chips and what they do. This 123 ABC is actually part of that sequence of thing. I started with this actual step and I ended up going off on a tangent and making a module that was basically this and then after this video I actually have another couple of modules that I've managed to squeeze out of analog to digital converter realm. So I'm going to flip over to the vlog post where I actually made this breadboard now. What this does is it converts analog kind of voltages to digital which is just zero and then a voltage so you can only have on or off with digital so it's converting the uh, smooth nice nice looking analog stuff into hard squares you know this is actually the first time i've ever played with an adac chip they turned up today i've sat here for an hour and i'm just just wondering what the heck it did this is an 8-bit adac it's called the adc 0820 i don't know whether the n matters but there it is so it converts the analog signal into eight bits these are the eight bits these are the eight leds down here here is the analog input wire and this wire goes to pin one on this chip it's called the analog input and that basically is the analog voltage that goes into the circuit so if i unplug this little resistor down here which we'll talk about in a little bit uh, look look it they're going crazy because the analog input's just nothing it's just static it's just the air Ooh, ooh. I, I figured what would be cool for a first project with an analog to digital converter it's just a just a trigger sequencer do you see these leds just have jacks out and just have them as triggers i have this wire here which is actually a clock input i'm going to put in this resistor which is a, just a 10k resistor it's a pull down resistor on the clock this jack right here is a clock signal so i'm just going to put that on there the inputs hooked to ground so if i unplug the input and just leave it floating it's going to be a few random ones. So that is the clock. You can see the speed. I'm going to speed up the clock. I'll speed it up. That's just a simple clock. It's literally coming from over there. And funnily enough, this clock is minus two volts and plus two volts. So it's in the plus minus range and it's going straight into the chip. No idea if that means it's not going to last for very long. We shall see. The reason why I chose this ADAC is it's the cheapest analog to digital 8-bit converter with the separate outputs I could find. It was two pounds, I think. So I'm going to tape this uh, onto here because I've run out of crocodile clips. Huh? This is just the input floating. It's got nothing connected into it. So this right here is just um, a voltage. The voltage is on zero at the minute and it's just turned off. This is the voltage right here. So now, whatever voltage goes into it makes some random bits. If I make this clock a little bit quicker, and then I just kind of do random voltages. This could be more of a sequence voltage. See there, that means you could sort of have like a funky gate sequencer that's pseudo random because it's actually the eight bits of the analog of this analog voltage that's coming in here so as you can see whilst if you connect uh, jacks to this it might look pretty funky yeah it's it's sort of funky there's a lot of um options here and i have gone ahead and begun to actually make this you will have seen this after this was actually finished so uh and now i'm gonna make the circuit for it and it's basically this the only question i have before i make the strip board layout is that uh, i've been reading a few books on this uh, recently and um i thought it was basically just on which is one which is the led on or Oh, oh, off, which is just nothing. It's just kind of like hanging out, doing its own thing and just not being on. Sort of like how a modular synthesizer works. When, for instance, when a when a trigger sequencer isn't triggering, it's just not sending anything. However, the way stuff like CMOS chips and stuff like that are set up, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm still, please bear with me, my understanding is still very reasonably vague, but I'm building it, um, is the actual zero is actually sucking. <laughs> It's, it's going to ground, it's actually going to ground. And this affects this circuit because right now these LEDs, my idea was to simply just send out from the LEDs to drum sequences. Yeah, I don't know whether this actually, the zero on this chip sinks current. So I need to think 
of a way of working out whether it does. The LED is off, it is actually sinking to ground, um, which is not what we want because we want it to not sink to ground, it just not to send any signal. So it doesn't interact with any other signals that you connect in with it when it's in a modular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take LED, and I'm gonna just um, connect the long leg to five volts and this to uh, ground, this to the, ah, oh, God damn it. And that's what happened. So this is sinking to ground. So what I'm gonna do is instead of literally just wire the jack coming out there, uh, I'm going to add a diode in place. So basically what a diode's gonna do is it's gonna stop it sinking to ground. I'm gonna go and design the stripboard layout and then we'll go and uh, see how to build this. Get a rough idea of like your bearings on the strip board. Basically, this is the ground that is going next to the voltage regulators that I see are around. Looking about there, I'm gonna pop the voltage regulator. So down, down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, right about there, and that's good. So the thing is, is with that is I'll need to split off this one's slightly different to usual because the bot there's a bot there's a couple at the bottom where the actual this side of the IC needs to be connected to this side of the IC. It's only because it shares some ground. It's a, there's a lot of grounding on this because there's um, a lot of functions that I'm not using, and that's going to be this one. Put little drill holes. Uh, uh, so I'm literally just going to get 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 twisting. Next step is the plethora of uh, diodes. The diodes I'm using are 1M4148 and usually it, it really doesn't matter most diodes as long as they're just signal diodes. So I've just uh, put dots where they're supposed to be so you know they kind of make sense because they're all directly below each other and I'm just going to pop them in. The only thing that's left to put on this are the jumper cables. You'll notice on the strip board layout there are black ones, red ones and blue ones. Black one means ground, red means power and blue is just a, a signal one. Uh, this is different in most of my strip board layouts and I should probably make a standard but yeah, you know. So all of the jumper cables have been put in place. The transistor at the bottom is actually just some circuit protection for the clock. I was testing it without it and it worked fine. I was just like, oh, maybe. If you look on the stripboard layer and where the blue wire goes to the chip, you can literally just skip the 2M3904, the D19 diode and the 1K resistor that's going to that transistor. Uh, if you want, that's what I was doing on the breadboard anyway. I was plugging it into, <laughs> into like plus minus five volts and it was still fine. So whatever you want to do, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make it so it works with a Eurorack power supply which is what I've been, it's all the rage nowadays. So I'm gonna get some wires going from where it says to plug the power in over to here where I'm gonna solve the a Eurorack supply. For that, when I was drilling the pilot holes, I managed to um, break the strip board layout. I was being a bit quick with the drilling, but I'm just gonna have to go with it. The other things I need to attach is like in the oscillator, oscillator module, as well as plenty of others, I use these Molex connectors to connect to the module. If you can look here, I've actually wired Unlike in the strip board layout, I've wired the LEDs separate to the uh, bit outputs as well as this. So there's a four Molex and there's two eight Molex as well. Actually, they're 10 Molex. But um, so what I've got, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which orientation they are and just literally solder them in place somewhere. With the clock, I might need to put it, I think I might have to put it here and wire it over. We'll have a look. Right, so I'm pretty sure this is done. Bit annoyed about that, but whatever. I'm not gonna build it again just for a bit of broken thing. Literally just gonna plop this in. Look, you can see through the strip board. Yeah. All looks pretty good. If you can see this, the Eurorack connector, usually when you're facing this, the minus is on that side and the plus is on that side. That screw is just gonna pinch it for now. When I know it definitely works, I'm either just gonna super glue it in place or uh, make some sort of makeshift kind of like fix, but whatever. So these two uh, can fit anywhere because they're both in parallel. They can go either way around. So whichever, whichever I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm pretty sure I've wired them up exactly the same. Let me hope so. And then this, hopefully, I've done right as well. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
I mean, I have no idea whether it's going to work or not. Oh, look, I've used different size standoffs and I didn't even realise that one's shorter than that one. Whatever. So before we uh, go and look at it and actually shoot the next video, um, I was doing some testing on this uh, this morning and it turns out that there's an issue. Uh, well, I've already fixed this issue, but with the design that I was building just then, this is why you probably shouldn't follow it word for word on that and just take it as a kind of kind of um, reference point, is when I plugged it into the clock uh, with the modular voltage, with the modular power supply, these four bits were lighting up anyway, and they were sort of flickering between. And these four bits are basically the first bits and you know, it kind of cuts out the first 16 values. You're kind of losing the first chunk of register with either, with some sort of weird uh, I couldn't really I can't really figure it out maybe somebody can think of the issue that I'm having but I'm thinking that I don't know it's just thinking the ground is somewhere completely different so this right here is the pin out of the ADC you should definitely have a read of the ADC 0820 n high-speed power uh, so this is so what happens is in the design that I literally just did, I put the negative voltage reference, the voltage references being the maximum and the minimum of the kind of curve that it's sampling from. So let's say if the voltage reference minus was ground, and the voltage reference plus was five volts, what it would be doing is the 256 values of the eight bit kind of register all be ranging from ground to five volts. The issue that I was having was the first 16 sets of values was kind of being taken up by the ground. It's kind of strange. It seems that it was getting a little confused. And I'm not sure whether that is to do with the power supply or maybe the voltage regulator is, um, I don't know, I haven't actually done anything. So what I did really quickly was make a voltage divider that in essence increased the voltage reference to slightly above ground. What I did was I made, so this is five volts, this is what is actually powering it, and there's ground. Initially I had voltage reference going straight to ground, but now I've got, oh, now I've got two resistors. This one is 100K, and this one is 220R, and uh, I've got to do a quick maths. Quick maths, I, I really, I'm really bad at maths, but it's under, it's about 0 .01, 0 0.01 volts. It's under 0 0.1 volts, it's like 0 0.05 volts, Come on, I just, um, maths isn't my strong point. So what I've done is I've basically taken this and plugged that into the voltage reference. What is that is doing is it's raising the voltage reference up a slight bit from ground. So it's kind of ignoring whatever's happening down there and plopping it into here. So whenever you just plug in a clock and not the CV, it's not giving random garble if you see what I mean. So I've updated the strip board layout. So if you're just gonna build the strip board layout, it, it will look, it will be different to what you were watching earlier. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually go and shoot the other video of this. So if I was you, I'd go and watch that. Or if you've already, if you've come back from here, well, this is how it was made. And um, sadly, you're not gonna see much of it working in this video because it's all over on the other channel. Uh, so yeah, go and check that out if you haven't then don't check that out. Thank you very much for the Patreon support. Doing this channel is a bit more work and I think it's definitely worth it. And um, it's really, uh, the Patreon has basically really helped to kind of up the whole anti of Lugman No Computer and such like that. And there are a fair few things happening this year. There's a fair few videos already up uh, that are gonna be coming up on this channel. And there's plans and stuff and vlogs and whatnot. If you want more, even more like videos, then please go and check out the Patreon because um, the support definitely helps for stuff that is actually coming up this year that you'll see very soon. So thank you very much. Anyway, peace.